show Make a Brew, where on today's show we are going to be reviewing the film A Bug's Life, released November 20th, 1998. Here's a little quick snobbish description, not going to be too the film. Flick is an inventive ant who's always messing things up for his colony. His latest mishap was destroying the food spores. Stores! Stores! Sorry, food stores! Sorry, got done there. That were supposed to be used to pay off the grasshoppers and the leader Hopper. Now the strong arming insect is demanding that the ants gather double the food or face annihilation. To avert disaster, Flick goes on a journey to recruit fighters to defend the colony. When he meets a band of high-flying circus insects, he thinks he's found his salvation. (laughs) Oh, okay, so that's a little quick listen to just in case you're not too familiar with the film. So this is now the point where I have to warn you that we're going to be having spoilers. So, if you've not seen this film, uh, then now is your chance to make a decision that's best for your conscience. Are you that bothered about spoilers and really don't want to have... I would rather go and watch the film first for you before you come and watch the rest of this show. Then please stop watching this video right now. Stop. Hit the pause button. Hit, hit stop. Go watch the film. Go check out some beers on my channel. When you have done that, come back and you're ready to go. But if you don't mind spoilers, then just wait a few seconds and then we'll be ready to go. So, as and as always, I'm not hot responsible, so make your choice. Your time starts now. Okay, we're raring to go with the now with our reviews part of the show okay those who are staying all sorted good okay let's get on with today's review okay so we start by setting the scene here for our film as we see the different habitats and wildlife and we see the ants they're busy at work collecting food supplies and what i love about the brilliance of the scene here is being told completely through music no dialogue whatsoever. I do love those moments where every night on Pixar, when they're trying to set the scene, they don't use dialogue, they just use their brilliant scores. Just amazing. So we then see Princess Otter. I've already put Otter in, the, in my prep, I need to remember she's a princess. So I need to remember that. Uh, being trained by her mother, the, which is, who is the queen of the colony, and how the colony is trying to get by day by day dealing with any problems that they may be facing like for example a leaf blocking their path off or one of flick's inventions and from our first encounter with the gra- grasshoppers we can tell how the colony is scared of them and how and how and i just love it because Literally, we are, as the audience, we, we don't, we, we are, we're just going to, n- n- to n- and we're learning about this, this, this world, and straight away you got one and go, <gasps> Grasshoppers are coming, run for your lives! We're like, what, 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 what? So you can tell how a villain is a great villain when the whole colony is scared of the villain, and we, the viewer, have yet to meet the villain. You can tell that's where a great villain is. And we can also see straight away how they are... They literally scare them by bullying them. They treat them poor, uh, poorly. Now, I know they are ants, but that's no way to treat somebody. Um, and just ruling their home like tyrants. So, basically, the message of bullying is a lot in this film. You know, we've all, you know, we've all had that in our lives at school. You know, anti-bullying weeks and how you need to stop your bullying and all that. That's clearly what this film is. It's don't be a bully. Um, and I just love how the grass steppers... Grasshoppers! From the offset, they are led by Hopper, who I love straight away. He is, his, menacing, his presence is menacing. He is scary from the offset. And the grasshoppers are extremely angry when they discover the food supply is gone due to an accident that co- got caused by one of Flick's inventions. And therefore, Hopper demands, you have to give us double or you face annihilation. So basically, that just means in plain, simple English, squash dance. So after the grasshoppers leave, the uh, the ants hold what basically is, is like court is like court. Um so Flick is basically being put on trial 
and he's trying to defend himself, um, but he's doing a poor job. But Princess Arthur is having none of it, and the colony, they're bickering over what do we do? Because the flick, we established straight away how this is not the first time one of his adventures has caused a bit of a problem, and so they're like, well, what do we do with him? Um, eh, eh. And Flick uses this to his advantage, um, and comes up with the idea by saying, why don't I go and look for help? Um, now, uh, Princess Arthur thinks that's a suicide mission. He's, he's not gonna, he's not gonna last, and I'd like him. But the colony, they think that actually that's a good idea. And they say to Princess Arthur, look, Arthur, come here, look, 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 look. If we let him do this, he won't be in the colony. And if Flick's not in the colony, that means he can't wreck the colony. So let him do it. So, I kind of feel too sorted here. Because on the one hand, the colony uh, seems to have no problem with sending Flick off of what is a potential suicide mission. But at the same time, they want to do what's best for the colony. I'll let you guys be the judges there. I really don't know what's the best. So, artist, Princess Artist is, definitely, is then convinced and is right, fine, Flynn. The court, the court has um, ruled that you will go out into the big wild world to find us some warrior ants. Case closed. Sorry, case adjourned. So that's decided. Decided. And so, on and Flick goes on his way. Then we get to meet the Flea Circus for the first time, and it gives us our first big opportunity to meet some of the other characters that we're going to be meeting and getting to know a little bit more of throughout the film, including Heimlich, whose name to me just sounds like the Heimlich Manoeuvre. Uh, I know, I, I know that's wrong, I know that's wrong. Um, kids, if you're not sure what Heim the Heimlich Manoeuvre is, go ask your parents. I'm not going to explain to it for you. But that's, but that's what I think of Highlight. Whenever I hear the name Highlight, that's what I think of the Highlight Maneuver. So I'll try my best not to refer to it as the Highlight Maneuver for up to today's show. And even though this scene is cringy, it's just full on cringe, I actually do sort of love the bad comedy that comes with it, that the circus is providing. However, I do have to side with the audience. If I was them, I would definitely would walk out after 10 minutes demanding my money back. So after the circus is, 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 is we've had the, the dreadful circus, Blick arrives on, at the site of the flea circus, but mistakes it for a city, and is stunned at all of the marvellous sights that he can see, and tries to make friends with some of the locals, so that he can recruit some of them to help his colony. However, instead of finding some tough, Bugs, you know, to be all like combo painting. What the hell is You get, you get the point. Uh, instead, he makes friends with the flea circus. Um, after Flick mistakes them for tough bugs, after they fend off two flies that were harassing them w w earlier. Uh, so Flick just leaves the circus crew back to his colony, who we can see are clearly struggling with the grasshoppers' uh, demands for double the supplies. And they are especially not happy when they see that Flick has managed to find help. As they thought he wouldn't make it back. So this now makes the, 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 the trial scene a little bit more dark because... The rest of the colony, who are basically trying to act as the ju as the jury, were like bit bit like to Princess Arthur, who basically was acting as the judge. L you know, like judge, if we if we give them this ruling, it it's fine. It work it works for both parties. It works for the accused because they can go and try and redeem themselves, and it works for us, the defendants, because we've got the accused out of our side. We know he's not going to try and wreck anything. But the colony, even though Princess Arthur sentenced Flick to obviously go find help, she did it in the thoughts of thinking, well, maybe she might do it. The colony, though, they were like, no, send him his money away. Go on, let him do it. He's not going to come back alive. 
So yeah, a little bit of dark humour in this film. A little bit, little bit, little bit of dark humour. So the Carly is, is shocked to see that Flick's back. He's actually done it. Because the Carly, like Flick, all mistake the circus for ferocious bugs. So what I said was in else of the colony is welcoming our new circus friends with open arms, Princess Asa is wary of them. She's not she's got every right to. However, the colony doesn't listen to her and they carry on being gracious hosts to their newfound guests who they believe are going to be their salvation. However, it all gets a bit too much for the sea circus. And whilst Princess Arta is addressing the colony, they basically let the cat out of the bag to flick. <laughs> he was horrified <laughs> to realise that he has actually recruited a circus instead of ferocious warriors that he thought they were. <laughs> The scene of her head because I love Flick's reaction. Because he's like, Circus Box! How could you be Circus Box? <laughs> oh no! No! <laughs> I love it! I love it! I love it! I love it! It's just. Oh my! Oh, t- <laughs> I love it! I love it! That's got to be one of the best reactions that I've seen in my life. That's got to be the best. Oh, oh, I'm dying! I'm killing this. Oh, I'm dying of laughter here right now. Oh, oh dear! Right, let's, let's try and compose now. Let's try and compose. Let's compose. Okay. And, um, I'm f- <laughs> Right, where are we? So, big, yeah, the reaction tube comes out. Um, and after, so yeah, so after a bickering match between Flick and the circus, the circus then tries to leave. However, a bird arrives on the scene, which not only scares the flea circus, but also the colony. And that with them, because I don't like birds either. Um, but when one well, of the, the little ones, the little ants, is in trouble because of the bird, the, the flea circus help by distracting it so Flick can rescue Dot. That's the ant that got in trouble. However, the colony ends up confusing this, these, these antics for heroic deeds and are still none the wiser of who the flea circus really are. So after learning vital information from Princess Arta about how Hopper, like me, does not like birds. Oh my god, the serious slides to mean Hopper. Flick decides to make a makeshift bird that they can control, which they will use to scare away the grasshoppers. Flick also has a circus box keep this as a serious secret from the colony so that he won't have to admit he screwed up. However, Princess Arthur rides the rest of the, of the colony to help build the bird. And we get a nice montage of the colony building the bird, and with the help of the circus bugs, they are able to complete the task. How the circus bugs ma- manager arrives at Ant Island, and this is when the horrible truth comes out. And, oh, surprisingly, everyone's mad at Flick. Not surprising there. And this time... There's no work coming back for Flick and Princess Arthur this time. So it's not. So if we don't even go for the whole ant court again, it's Princess Arthur on the spot, right for the, for the Flick goes. Flick, I want you out. You are banished from the colony. You please say your goodbyes and go. And the circus bugs, they leave too. The grasshoppers, so it's been quite a while since we've seen what the grasshoppers have been up to. So we get to go back and see them now. It's a nice little see, go see back to them. And this is where we get the full, um, see them step up a notch in their tyranny. Um, 
Because as promised, they return to Ant Island. And this time, they get nastier. As they're not satisfied with just taking the food. They want to make sure they put the ants in their place. So it's a bit like the food, so it's a bit like the food chain here. So we see the grasshoppers are at the top. The ants are at the bottom. And Hopper fears that if the bottom of the food chain is able to grow in confidence and they think thinks that they can take on the grasshoppers who are at the top of the food chain, then the grasshoppers will become the boss of the food chain and the ants will become the top of the food chain. So Hopper doesn't want to be ruled by the ants and so decides, right, we're going to put them in, the, in their place. And so the plan is... That not gonna just take the food. We're gonna kill the queen and take over. I was wondering how long was it gonna be before this film because one of those typical plot lines where the villain is just not satisfied with being feared. He wants to actually rule the world, and the only way to do it is to kill the current current ruler. Why did I? F why was I not surprised that this was the turn events were shaping into? Anyway, before we get to that. Dot has left to find Flick, who we next see moping and is downtrodden, as he now realises that everything he's done in his life has only been made things worse and not for the better, even when the circus bugs try to convince him to still carry out his plan involving the bird. Flick is having none of it, as he believes it will be a failure like he is. He is. However, Dot is able to convince Flick to believe in himself once again and they head back to an island. So they initiate the plan and at first it looks like the plan is going to work. It looks like it's going to work. The bird causes the grasshoppers to panic. However, Hopper eventually realises what's going on after P.T. Flea, who of course was the manager of the circus, sets the bird on fire, forcing it to make a bit of a crash landing. And oh my god, this is then when Flick is at his most bravest. And oh my god, I love this scene. Because this is the scene where the victim finally snaps and is able to stand up to the bully. And Flick basically tells Hopper that he was the one behind the bird, the bird, everything. And the grasshoppers brutally attack Flick. Oh, it's not pretty to watch. However, despite his injuries, he reveals all of Hopper's plans to the rest of the colony, and they finally stand up to Hopper, and this inspires the colony to finally revolt against the grasshoppers. So in all the chaos that's going on, because we've basically got what it feels like a mutiny, but it's not really a mutiny. Um, mm -hmm. Well, the mutiny, mutiny against the regime in power. Just then, a real bird shows up. However, at first... Hopper, and this is where Hopper meets his, uh, his, his gruesome demise, because Hopper at first thinks it's just another trick, no, it's just another creation of flick, 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 flick by flick, and starts, basically goes it, taunts it, and doesn't realise that it's actually a real life bird, and it, the, the bird grabs Hopper, and drops him in its nest, where a flock of baby birds await in what has got to be one of the most gruesome of deaths in film history. I know we're going to dare say Pixar history because this is because this was, this was only film two for Pixar, so that's got to be one of the most gruesome deaths I think I've seen in film in film history, especially since it's supposed to be a family film, you know. It's supposed to be a family film. Um, and Hopper's death is absolutely gruesome. But luckily though, we do cut away before Hopper it gets eaten by the birds. So luckily we don't see it in all its full gruesome glory. Um, we do get spared a bit. So Hopper's now dead. The grasshoppers are now gone. They've been defeated. Uh, the colony is now change for the better and Flick's inventions finally get put to good news and he even develops a relationship with Princess Atta. 
Let me do it. Let me do it. Let me. Maybe we can see that was coming from coming coming from a mile away. Even a blind man can spot the sparks go fly between those two throughout the throughout the film. However, and then however the circus bugs um they don't stay. They sadly do say their goodbyes to Ant Island. Um. Hopefully, with a now better circus routine. We're hoping their time at Anglo has made them realise they've got to go with a better act. And they do try and get Flick to come with him. But, Flick states that, actually, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is my place. With Prince Starter and my friend Colony. And hopefully, this could be the start of building up a proper relationship with the Colony. And we can start seeing Flick in the new light. So, there you go. That brings us to the end of the film. So, just to just get to the standouts. Um... I'm going to do standout moment first, because I think for me there's one clear scene that stands out above the rest, and that is the moment where Flick stands up top. But I think what Pixar tried to do for this film is show you that it's about bullying. It's about how you're not supposed to be a bully. Um, for the grasshoppers, they just strike fear in the hearts of the colony from the get-go. Even before we, the beauty gets just to see them, they are so menacing. They are ruthless, tyrannical, and the colony we see is clearly afraid of them. And it takes right away until the the, the end of the film for one of them to go to flick, but actually go right. I'm going to stand to Hopper, even though the child's side could end up being brut- brut- brutally battered into a pulp. Um, I'm going to stand to Hopper. It's the last thing I do, which it nearly could have been. So I do love that scene. That's the my stand moment. Is the, is the scene where Flick stands up to Hopper. Now. Standout character. This was a tricky one. Um, because there were a few options. There were there were quite a few candidates. The Queen, she was actually a candidate. She actually was a candidate for me. Heimlich was a candidate. Even Hopper was a candidate to be standout character. Uh, just because how I loved his Mercing presence, and I love how his ty- tyranny. See, I love him. He's beat to be the biggest, the baddest that ever was. I love that from the get go, and it just does not slip for the whole film. It's not even one little glimpse, not even one tiny, not just even one tiny glimpse to show that Hopper could maybe have a little soft side. Nope, Hopper is right into the core, right into the core. He's rotten to the core. Who could ask for more? So I could resist. So that was the reason why I wanted to give Hopper a start character. But I haven't. Okay. Because I haven't given it to Hopper. Because I, and even though me and Hopper we do share the same fear of birds. We don't like birds. Um, But I think my biggest fear though is the fear, is the fear of heights though. That's part of birds second. So you know Hopper was a candidate, I couldn't give it to Hopper, but I just want to try to explain to you why Hopper, I put Hopper in contention. The actual standout character I have gone for, so the person who actually does get a standout character, is Princess Otta. Because I love how she is, you know, trying to find her place in the colony, you know, she's going to be, she's going to be the future of one day. Um, I love how she's able to cope with her, her own ideas, but the colony, they're just not really not, not sure what to, about her first. They're like, you've still got a lot to learn to kid. We know best. Trust us. And it takes a very long time for them to uh, trust Atta. And eventually Atta does find a place in the colony. She's able to be happy with who she is. And clearly it's going to find a soulmate in Flick. So Princess Atta gets the, is the official standout character for A Bug's Life there. But I just wanted to explain to you through my candidates because there were quite a fair few candidates for standout character. Well, that's going to do it for today's show. Thank you so much for watching, as always. If you'd like to check out more videos, then please do subscribe to my channel. It's just a quick click of the button, and there you go. You will never miss a moment when any new content gets released, whether it's one of my many other shows or another episode of Make a Brew. And until next time, TTFN, ta ta now. Hello, George Han here. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with all my latest videos. Don't forget to like, send a comment below, and why not stick around to watch a few more. Go on.
I highly recommend it.